Welcome to the Psych Central Show, where each episode presents an in-depth look at issues from the field of psychology and mental health, with host Gay Howard and co-host Vincent M. Wales. Hello, everyone, and welcome to this week's episode of the Psych Central Show podcast. My name is Gabe Howard, and with me, as always, is Vincent M. Wales. And in order to make the show more interesting, we have brought along a guest. A very awesome woman by the name of Rachel Starr Withers is going to talk to us about living with schizophrenia, advocating for people living with schizophrenia, being a mental illness advocate, being a stunt woman, and uh, having one of the first mental health YouTube channels, I think, ever in existence. Okay, maybe not the first, but she's been around for an awfully long time, and she has done an incredible amount of work. I had the good fortune of meeting her a few months ago, and she really inspired me to realize that, you know, we are really doing a lot of great advocacy, and her energy was just very infectious, and I wanted to have her on the show. Rachel, how are you? Hey, what's up? Having a a good day so far. (laughs) Hopefully this will go great, too. Oh, it's definitely going to go great. So there there are many, many directions that we can go first. And, and I, I know that I want to get to how do you set yourself on fire. But because this is a <laughs> mental health and psychology show, we're going to table that right. for a moment and, and talk about what it's like to live with schizophrenia. And we've done a show before where we had a, a great young woman just talk about some of the, the symptoms of, of schizophrenia and things like that. But in your own words, what would you say it's like to live with schizophrenia. Tell, tell our audience uh, what you would like them to know. Well, well, first of all, I've had it like ever since I was little, but I wasn't diagnosed to my 20s. So it's hard for me to be like, well, this is what it's like compared to a normal person because it's not like I, you know, was normal and then suddenly it hit. It's just kind of like I grew up seeing monsters and that was that that's my norm. I, I think like the biggest thing about schizophrenia and then people like always want to um, just, I guess, capitalize on like the scary stuff, hearing voices, seeing monsters or things like that. But it's a lot of confusion, kind of disorganized thinking, stuff moving around, for instance, letters, numbers. And I'll like a lot of times think I'm reading something and realize that I haven't been reading it. It's, it's weird. Just like stuff like moves around and it, it can be very confusing. And I think, you know, going through the world being confused a lot is for me like the biggest thing about schizophrenia. That's my life too, and I don't have schizophrenia. <laughs> but but that's uh, uh, you Different know we, we I, yeah, and we do we do make those jokes a lot. But you you raise a really good point that you weren't diagnosed until in your twenties, but you lived this way your whole entire life, so you didn't realize there was anything amiss, right? Just as far as you were concerned, this right, was yeah. Oh yeah, I mean, I grew up seeing monsters, but I also grew up very religious. So, you know, you go to church and you hear about demons and angels. So I thought that's what I was seeing. And you grow up hearing monsters under your bed. And I just assumed everyone saw the monsters. Like, it, I, like I had no clue other people didn't see this stuff. I just assumed we don't talk about it. You know, your mind playing tricks on you. Like, even as a little kid, I was like, oh, okay, that, that's what we're talking about. These are the monsters. I really didn't realize that I was different until high school. And I was saying something about it to one of my friends. And she was like, what are you talking about, Rachel? And I was like, oh, I, I'm the only one saying these, this stuff. Oh, wow. Oh, okay. And I like didn't say anything else. I was like, never mind. Just kidding, guys. <laughs> well, how did you feel after that? I mean, what, what went through your head for the ensuing days after that, that encounter? I mean, it really, it kind of freaked me out. And I still didn't tell anyone. Uh, my parents had had me like, go see a therapist for like anger management, different things. But I never actually brought up seeing things and hearing things and the confusion. I was a straight A student. Uh, I even, you know, I I graduated top honors and different things. So it's not like, I guess there are any warning signs that I was having troubles because I was, I just was really adaptable. (laughs) You know, I still managed to make A's and everything. So, you know, there never was any warning signs of, oh gosh, we need to get Rachel to the, the doctor. I'm always fascinated when I hear that because that's sort of how my family was. Even though I had all of the classic symptoms of bipolar disorder and depression and suicidality, me and my family, we had this idea that, hey, he's got a job, he makes money, he owns a house, therefore he can't possibly be mentally ill. It's, that's something that has oh, yeah. to other people. So how did that convert? Oh, yeah. Like, how were you finally diagnosed? A lot of stuff happened between high school and me getting diagnosed, but I kind of came to terms that there is something seriously wrong with me. And I went to the doctor. 
a, a doctor, a psychiatrist. And I told him every, well, I, I told him like, I guess the kitty version of what was going on because I was too scared. I, I, in my mind, I thought they would just, you know, lock me up when they heard that I was seeing things and hearing things, um, which of course that's not how it is, but I, I was scared. So I go to the doctor and he's like, Oh, you're probably a borderline schizophrenic. And I'm like, oh, okay. Like, I don't even think that's a real thing. <laughs> but um, then a year later, because things just kept escalating suicide attempts and whatnot, I went back to another doctor and I was like, okay, this is everything. And I had it all written out in notebooks, you know, to take to them because that way I went chicken out. And I was like, this is what's going on. And um, they did testing and they, they diagnosed me as a paranoid schizophrenic. So and I was do like, you, I don't know, maybe yeah, do 20, you mind if, 21. Okay. I was going to say, do you, do you mind if I ask how old you are? And it sounds like you were, you were in your early twenties, 20, 21 years old. Yes. How did oh, you yeah. feel? I mean, how did you feel? How did your family feel? How did your friends feel? I mean, yeah, go from there. What oh. happened next? Oh, yeah. I, I, I kept it like I, no one knew I went to the doctor. I didn't tell anybody like my parents or anything. And I just kind of kept it all to myself. Eventually, I did tell my parents and we had a trampoline at the time. And so I had them come out and sit on the trampoline with me. And I was like, so guess what? Um, and I had my little notebooks there and I, you know, told them what was going on. And I, m mental disorders definitely run in one side of my family. So it's not like that much of a shock. I guess I was the only one, though, who's like was actively seeking help for it. You know, whereas if you look back, you know, in the family history, you're like, oh, my God, all of these people have problems, <laughs> like major problems. But, you know, definitely no diagnosis. Or if they did, they sure never told anybody else in the family. It was definitely a keep it quiet thing. As far as friends, I didn't, I mean, I didn't have friends for a really long time. I was very isolated and just kind of shut myself off. And, you know, it was kind of hard to deal with. And I really didn't start making friends till like, um, I guess age 25. Like it's hard to make adult friends. <laughs> um, but yeah, I just, yeah, my early 20s, I really didn't have any like real friends. So that was easy, that part. <laughs> there was no one to shock. So when you told your family, what was their, how did they respond to you? My, I mean, I have an amazing um, family, my parents and brother. I think it, it did take them, a, like they took it in when we were talking that day. Like they weren't mean or they weren't, you know, didn't act like they were horrified. But I do think it, it took a little bit for them to fully like grasp it. And it was really cute. My dad, he came to me one day because he started, you know, searching for it and trying to find out about it. And he, he came to me one day and he was like, you know, because he has no concept of depression. Like he just has no concept of it whatsoever. So the idea that someone would want to kill themselves would be depressed, like he just didn't understand it. And he came to me and he had read this article where a man had cancer and the, the, and the article, the man also had depression and cancer and he was describing the differences. And that was like a light in my dad's head, like that article. And so he came and was telling me about the article. And it was just so cute that, you know, he's genuinely trying to understand what's going on. And he definitely has, you know, in the years since always tried to understand. That's awesome. I, I have to say from watching your stunt woman videos, I realized after watching several of them that it, it's your dad who helps you with a lot of those stunts in those videos. Yeah. So, oh, yeah, <laughs> absolutely. <laughs> He's my main person. <laughs> That is, that is, that is, it, it's, it's really very cool. You, you can tell that, that you're very close uh, with your father and I, I can see where somebody would need to get used to this because, you know, mental health, mental illness isn't really taught in school. So, you know, when we're diagnosed and we tell our friends and family, hey, we have this diagnosis, the first thing that they think is all the stereotypes, all the stuff they learn from TV yeah. and media. Uh, and then they sort of have to go out and learn it and then come back and ask us really stupid questions. But it's in those really stupid questions that we're able to educate them, they educate us, and we can all get on the same page. So uh, that's really, really awesome that, that you and your family are so close. Yeah, no, they're great. We are talking to Rachel Starr Withers, one of the coolest schizophrenia advocates I know, the owner of her own YouTube channel, and just a general badass person. And she is going to tell us more about that in a moment. So we'll be right back. This episode is sponsored by BetterHelp.com. Secure, convenient, and affordable online counseling. All counselors are licensed, accredited professionals. Anything you share is confidential. Schedule secure video or phone sessions, plus chat and text with your therapist whenever you feel it's needed. A month of online therapy often costs less than a single traditional face-to-face -face session. Go to BetterHelp.com forward slash Psych Central and experience seven days of free therapy to see if online counseling is right for you. BetterHelp.com forward slash Psych Central. 
Hey, fans of the Psych Central Show podcast, we are currently surveying our listeners to learn more about you and to learn what we can do better. Please take a few minutes and visit our website at psychcentral.com slash show and click on listener survey link found on that page. Thank you. Welcome back, everyone. We're talking with Rachel Star Withers, schizophrenia advocate and badass stunt woman. Everybody in the first half of the show is going, wait a minute, they keep saying stunt woman. What, what the heck's that about? So Rachel, what is that about? And why did you set yourself on fire? I, I like having fun um, and pushing limits. And for some reason, I do that through doing stupid stunts. <laughs> and it started God, like 12 years ago. I had this idea for playing bikini paintball. And then, of course, filmed it. And that was my first stunt video. And I went from there and I've done alligator wrestling, topless skydiving, and lots of nunchucks, and actually really good nunchucks. And I love playing with fire. Uh, to be fair, I have taken classes, so I, I'm super safe. But um, yeah, I love playing with fire. And earlier this year, I did a um, full body burn. And we talked about family a couple of minutes ago. And so my dad blows a fireball, sets me on fire. And my mom and brother are filming. <laughs> like my mom is like right there by my feet filming the slow motion camera. And my brother, because when you're on fire, you, you don't know when to put yourself out. So he's at the side counting off the seconds to tell me to yeah put myself out. So it was like a whole family affair of setting Rachel on fire. <laughs> That's what we All did right. one afternoon. You go I was going to say, is this going to become a family tradition? You know, like every Thanksgiving, hey, let's set Rachel on fire now. <laughs> I, I mean, I'm, I'm for it. I bought all the equipment. So <laughs> I'm like, I got to get my monies out of this. You know, it was a couple hundred dollars to get the whole full set up and trainings. I'm like, yeah, let's got to do this some more. <laughs> what I really love about this part of your story is when, when I first met you, you know, we're all sitting around and we're all talking and you were talking about, you know, your YouTube channel, Living with Schizophrenia. And then you, you talked about some of these stunts, but you, you didn't use the word stunt. You were just like, yeah, I set myself on fire and, you know, some other things that you did. And I thought, wow, <laughs> you know, living with schizophrenia must be really rough. I mean, to do those things to yourself. And I just, I immediately, you know, Gabe Howard, the, the, the dude with this show, 10 years worth of, you know, anti-stigma, just... I, I immediately just assumed that this was a, a symptom of schizophrenia. And then you hit me with, oh, I've been on TV. I'm a stunt woman. I'm trained. And I was like, wow, oh, yeah. that never even occurred to me. And this was, this was kind of a cool moment for me because I had to teach myself a lesson because I, I jumped to a conclusion yeah. I didn't need to. Uh, so, so, hey, thanks for making me look stupid in my own mind. Okay. Um, oh, okay. But uh, I loved watching the video where, where you set yourself on fire, or rather your father set yourself on fire. And I remember in one right, of the yeah. uh, your father tried to set you on fire. You didn't catch on fire, but you jumped into the water to put yourself out anyways, and everybody laughed. And I just thought, yeah. this is cool. This is, this is cool. So you've been on television yeah. for this, though. This isn't just something you do in your backyard. Like, this is your job. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> where are some yeah, of the places? No, I've been on a... Oh, go ahead. Yeah, no, I was going to say, Brad, tell us some of the shows you've been on. Uh, well, most recently, um, Ridiculousness on MTV. I've been with them a few different times, but I was in their opening show for their 10th season. So that was really cool. And one of my previous times um, episodes in the past has actually been their most like popular, most watched episode in 10 years. Like They've actually been doing that show for a while. I'm on True TV a lot. Um, I was on American Ninja Warrior a few times, America's Got Talent, and just so many other shows just all across the board and all over the world too. Australia just was on a show in the Netherlands, uh, China, different things like that. Just crazy, crazy shows. <laughs> and is this something that you had, had decided you wanted to do at an earlier age or is this something you sort of fell into and ran with it? Well, I, um, I grew up in professional theater acting and my, my college degree is in entertainment management. So I knew I wanted to do something in entertainment and like I said, when I was 20 is when I started making these stunt videos, just messing around, having fun. And, you know, YouTube was very young then. <laughs> there was a lot of things very young and I just started dumping them on the internet. And one day a TV show, Whacked Out Sports, called me and they were like, hey, we want to buy this from you. And I was like, okay. And that was the first time I realized, oh, I can sell this stuff. <laughs> and it went from there. Bigger and crazier stuff, always upgrading my equipment, bigger, bigger stunts getting crazier with them. Well, that's true. If it's worth doing, it's worth doing bigger. So let's talk about oh, your yeah. YouTube channel because your YouTube channel is, is very popular. And as you pointed out, 
Uh, a lot of people have seen it uh, enough to attract the, the attention of you know, mainstream television. Did you start off your YouTube channel doing stunts or did you start off your YouTube channel for mental health advocacy, mental illness advocacy, or what, how did that go? So I definitely started out just doing stunts. And a few years in, I was like, you know, I've been dealing with schizophrenia and I wanted to make this video called Normal Living with Schizophrenia pretty much to let other schizophrenics know that they're not alone. Because when I first got diagnosed, you know, I was searching about schizophrenia and all I could find was either, you know, one flew over the cuckoo's nest kind of things, you know, Hollywood style version of it, or like these like medical documents, you know, research papers that was like also very cold, you know, and I was just, I couldn't really find any real people that weren't freaks, you know, like sen sensationalized. And I didn't want anyone else to feel that way. So I was like, I, I need to make a video because this is something very important to me. And I know there have to be other people like me. And I was like, you know, it might come up in like Google page 5,000, but at least somewhere on the web, you know, someone researching schizophrenia, afraid that they have it, will find another normal human with it. So that was kind of my goal. And it, it went from there. And I just started um, making these videos about my schizophrenia, mental health. And I didn't mean to, like, it didn't occur to me at the time that I was doing, but I actually then, you know, I had 10 years documentation of a schizophrenic, which is like, yeah, one of the longest running, you know, studies and stuff. So it's kind of cool that I just accidentally did this. Yeah. Did, didn't, huh? a, uh, didn't a college contact you because they, yeah. they found your channel and they sort of mm -hmm. studied you by way of these videos? Yep. Yeah, no, it first started, it was a, a nursing student in mental health contacted me and he's like, hey, we've been studying you in class. And for my report, I thought it'd be really cool if I actually got a quote from you. And I'm like, you've been what? <laughs> and like, that's how I found out. Like he got, the, the student did. And I was like, yeah, I'll help you with the report, but also let me talk to your teacher. <laughs> um, so that was like, right. Like that was the first time. And then some different colleges in Great Britain had contacted me and they flat out asked, that was nice of them. Hey, can we use your videos in some of our classes? And I was like, yeah, absolutely. And then um, just the other year, Harvard Medical contacted me and they were doing genetics testing and wanted me to be part of it with the schizophrenia. Same thing, found, finding me through, yeah, my videos and stuff. So it's, it's been kind of interesting. I'm always like, wonder, like, what are they saying? <laughs> like, oh gosh, she's getting, look how bad she is here. Like, are, like yeah, how intense are they studying these videos? <laughs> That's really amazing. And of course, you also, I, I believe that you just finished doing like, I, I want to say a world tour for a pharmaceutical company, right? You, you talked to a lot of people about living with schizophrenia overseas. Mm -hmm. did, did I get yeah, that right? Well, I went through. Yes, yes. The pharmaceutical company, I don't know if I can say it or not. They had like co-sponsored it, kind of. What it was, was for Taiwan and Hong Kong, they were doing this massive anti-stigma campaign because they had a really big issue with people with schizophrenia. They, they like pulled them and they had these three different things that pretty much everyone believed. One being that like schizophrenics can't work. They can't contribute to society. They're dangerous. And they kind of brought me over because they wanted people to see, Hey, this girl's a schizophrenic and she works. She does all this stuff and she's never hurt anybody. You know, you don't have to be scared of people like her. And I got to be on TV shows, magazines, like interviews, press conferences. And it was just like a really cool thing to get to go and just talk to people and show them what a schizophrenic is. Like, it's not a scary thing. And then, of course, I got to meet with a whole bunch of uh, people with schizophrenia in both those countries and, you know, sit down with them and even talk about how they can advocate. What can they do to, you know, help people around them learn? And it was just really cool to be able to go and do that. I think you need a slogan. I have schizophrenia. I set myself on fire, but I won't set you on fire. <laughs> Uh-oh, that's, that's pretty good. Yeah, or, or I set myself on fire because I want to, not because my brain is telling yeah. me to. Right. Um, right. It has the, nothing to do with the schizophrenia. <laughs> you, you have and one I actually, of oh, I, like, well, I don't do stunts when, my, I'm, like, when I'm having a bad day or I'm mentally off. I, I don't do anything with stunts. Like, I just, I don't. So it's kind of funny because, like, no, the stunts really have nothing to do with it. It always makes me laugh a little when I have to educate people that, you know, well, yeah, if I'm feeling really, really depressed, I, I don't go to work. I, I'm not saying that I never miss a day of work because of, you know, living with bipolar disorder. I, I'm saying that I manage my bipolar disorder so I can have the best life that I can. I'm never saying that the symptoms never overwhelm me. That would be ridiculous. And uh, you, you said that very, very well uh, when we were in New Jersey. I believe your exact quote was, 
I want to have the most badass life possible and I don't want schizophrenia to stop me from doing the things that I want to do. And that, that oh, made yeah, absolutely. Really big impression on me really big. I don't usually yeah. fanboy over people, but you, you know, you, you, were, <laughs> you are one of the coolest people that I've met in this space. Uh, no offense to all. Oh, of well, thank you. <laughs> well, thank you. I, I try. Yeah. I mean, that's always something I stress in my videos is, you know, people with mental health disorders, you know, any mental health disorder, like you can still live an amazing badass life. Like you don't have to just think, Oh, this is it, <laughs> you know? And I think getting a diagnosis for anybody, even with just to say depression, that's a big blow. And so many people feel or think, and even loved ones feel and think that, Oh gosh, I'm going to have to take care of them the rest of my life. You know? And it's like, no, <laughs> lots of people, mental disorders function and live like above average lives, like do amazing things that, you know, a lot of people would never consider doing as, you know, yeah. <laughs> definitely proof of that. Rachel, how do we find you online? What's your YouTube channel? What's your website? My YouTube is Rachel star live. And that's the same thing as my, my, uh, my website, my Twitter, Instagram, and that's, Rachel star with one R and star, or you will get someone completely different. <laughs> live. So Rachel star live.com. That's how we find you. Yes. Excellent. Yeah. Thank you so much for agreeing to be on the show. It was really, oh, really it's awesome. Been awesome. Yes, it was. Thank you. Oh, thank you so much. <laughs> yeah, All right, thank everybody. You guys for having me. <laughs> it's our pleasure. Thanks everyone for tuning in. Remember you can get one week of free, convenient, affordable, private online counseling anytime, anywhere, just by visiting betterhelp.com slash psych central. We will see everyone next week. Thank you for listening to the psych central show. Please rate, review, and subscribe on iTunes or wherever you found this podcast. We encourage you to share our show on social media and with friends and family. Previous episodes can be found at psychcentral.com slash show. Psychcentral.com is the internet's oldest and largest independent mental health website. Psych Central is overseen by Dr. John Grohall, a mental health expert and one of the pioneering leaders in online mental health. Our host, Gabe Howard, is an award-winning writer and speaker who travels nationally. You can find more information on Gabe at GabeHoward.com. Our co-host, Vincent M. Wales, is a trained suicide prevention crisis counselor and author of several award-winning speculative fiction novels. You can learn more about Vincent at VincentMWales.com. If you have feedback about the show, please email TalkBack at PsychCentral.com.